functions are any functions that are a fraction form that have a polynomial in the top and the bottom. So most of the time we only worry about this if there are x's in the bottom. Okay, and what that does to our domain, remember our domain is any value we can put into the function for x that would give us a valid answer. Now what happens with fractions, which is what rational functions are, is we cannot divide by zero, which means the denominator of our fraction cannot be zero. So that affects our domain because anything that makes the denominator zero cannot be included in our domain. All other real numbers can, um, but anything that makes the denominator zero cannot. So to find the domain of a rational function, what you're going to do is take whatever is in the denominator and you're going to set it equal to zero and then you will solve that because that will tell you what numbers are going to make the denominator zero. In this case, I get x equals 4. So I know that 4 cannot be put into this function as a value of x because, notice, it would, in fact, make the denominator 0 and would make this undefined. So the only exclusion I have from my domain is the number 4. So my domain is all real numbers except for 4. The way that we write that using mathematical interval notation is that we can go from negative 4 to 4 and then we have to stop. Notice I used a parenthesis so that I know I'm not including 4. We use the union symbol so we can put the other half of our interval. Um, starts again at 4 but doesn't include it and goes to infinity. So this is the way that you would write if your domain is all real numbers except for 4. You go from negative infinity to 4 not including it and then from 4 to infinity again not including the 4. Okay, so here is another example where we want to find the domain of this function. Again, our goal is to find out what would make the denominator equal zero. So we take our denominator for our fraction, and we set it equal to zero, and we solve that. This has x squared, and it also has an x. So I know I'm going to have to either factor or use the quadratic formula. I'm going to go for factoring first. Are there factors of negative 10 that add to equal negative 3? and there are negative 5 and a positive 2 would add to be negative 3 but multiply to be negative 10. Okay, to continue solving we set each factor equal to 0 and we solve that. So we get x equals 5 and x equals negative 2. So these are the two numbers that would make my denominator equal zero, so they are excluded from my domain because they would make that answer undefined. So our, our um, domain is all real numbers except for negative two and five, but the way we write that in interval notation, notice negative two is to the left of five on a number line. If we were to put them on here, negative two would be over here and five here. So our domain starts from negative infinity and goes to negative 2 and doesn't include it. And then we get to go from negative 2 and we have to stop again at 5 because we can't have the 5. And then we start at 5 and go to infinity. Notice it's all parentheses because I'm not including the negative 2s and the 5. This is the way I would write my domain. It, this is all real numbers, but it, it excludes negative 2 and it excludes 5. Here is yet another domain question. Okay, so if we look at this function, again, we want to take whatever is in the denominator, set that equal to zero, and solve it because, again, anything that makes the denominator equal zero is going to make our answer undefined, and so it cannot be part of our domain. x squared minus 9, it has a squared in it. You could solve this by adding 9 to both sides and taking the square root, as long as you remember to put a plus or minus in front. You can also solve this by factoring. Hopefully you remember the difference of squares. I have x squared minus, notice 9 is 3 squared. So this factors as x plus 3 and x 
minus 3. Another way you can think of that is notice there's 0x in the middle. So factors of negative 9 that add to equal 0 would be plus 3 and minus 3. Um, I set each of those equal to 0 and solve them. And I get x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 3. So again, these are the things that are excluded from my domain because they would make x squared minus 9 equals 0 or make my denominator 0. So my domain, again, I start at negative infinity, stop at the first value, negative 3. The smallest one should come first. And then I can go ahead and include from negative 3 to 3, but I have to stop at 3 and exclude it. And then I go from 3 to infinity. So here is my domain written in interval notation. All real numbers except for negative 3 and 3. Okay, one last example. Okay, so once again, I have a rational function. I have fraction in the top. I have a fraction with a polynomial in the top and in the bottom. The things that we, when we do the domain of rational functions, the things we worry about is what will make the denominator equal zero because that is not part of our domain. So. We take the denominator and set it equal to 0 to find what's excluded from our domain. We would, again, we have a squared and an x, so we need to either factor or use the quadratic formula. I'll try to factor this first. Um, if I factor, are there factors of negative 12 to add to equal negative 4? Well, 6 times 2 is 12, and if I have a negative 6 and a positive 2, Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4, and negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. So that works. We set each of our factors equal to 0. And we solve them. I find that x is 6 and x is negative 2 are the two values excluded from my domain because they make the denominator 0. If I write that in mathematical notation, all real numbers except for negative 2 and 6. I would go from negative infinity to negative 2. Always remember to keep that smaller number. It has to come first. And then we go from negative 2 to 6 and stop again, and then from 6 to infinity. Okay, so there is the domain of this rational function. Um,